Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, I'm Matt Pison, and you're listening to Otaku Generation, the best place on the web, and you guys get to be here for another 20 hours! Well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation, next generation radio for otaku. Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. This week, we take you on an adventure through fantasy of a long time gone. Unless you watch anime, where just about every movie evolves a desert, then maybe not. We're still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where no one can tell me I can't fly this carpet when I'm drunk. Show number 599, November 30th, 2016. For this week's topic, Magi, the Labyrinth of Magic. And now, why Thanksgiving should really be about my birthday. Number one, you get cake. Number two, I get presents. Number three, I'm half merman. Number four, I'm half Shaquille O'Neal. And number five, I'm 100% pretty cool. And now, someone who's got me gifts but is making me wait 20 years, Alan Chase. I was thinking, it should have called um, Bryce Giving. Is that, mm. that should be it? <laughs> I was referencing Mershack. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I got married on Thanksgiving Day one year, oh. so it's always been our turk anniversary. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> well, hi, everyone. I'm Alan. Uh, I guess the rest of you should introduce yourselves. We're a little ahead of the game today. Um, yeah. Why don't the rest of you do that? <laughs> Gets up, Bryce. And Paul. Yeah, we don't have a Matt today. No Matt's sad. Um, but, sad. But that's fine. Hopefully we'll see him next week. What's Freesh? What's Bang? What's Squeak with the OG crew? Indeed. Uh, so, uh, Luke Ray came in, so there's that. Um, right. Bryce released a new show on Tuesday. I've yet to edit it as of right. so, Sunday. I will get I to that. I gave you over a week. <laughs> yeah. Notice this time. Yes, <laughs> yes, you were really early. That's That was a strange part. Even you were surprised. Um, so, moving on from that, I watched a bunch of movies, so I eventually saw Zootopia. Mm. Surprisingly, Matt's not here. I'm sure he'd want my uh, my input on it. Um, you know, I thought it was good. I thought it was a fun movie. Um is it the amazing masterpiece that you guys were hyping it up to be? I, I don't know about that, but I think it's a fantastic movie to watch with kids. And definitely there's a lot there uh, for the adults. And even though we mostly got burned by the the fun part of the sloths in the trailers, um, they still had... Yeah, I was still amused by them and tortured by them at the same time. So um, that was good. Um, I watched uh, the final... No, the finest hours. There's a movie with Chris Pine has to do with uh, 1952 and a Coast Guard rescue of a ship, a tanker, oil tanker that split in half. And one half was able to basically shore itself and then they had to be rescued and then eventually, you know, capsized. Um, but this is, um, but it was a kind of interesting movie. And then, uh, what else did I watch? Uh, there is another movie of note that I watched that I cannot recall at this moment. Um, oh, and I finished Stranger Things. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. still I'm still about still, the same place. Okay. Yeah, you know I'm not gonna. I don't really care about season two. Um, yeah, okay, I, I, I don't enough. think it's a bad show. I just for me, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't sort of flipped over on on my head about it. So uh, yeah, what else? Um, I don't know. I will stop there. I think that is basically it for me. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting stuff. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, Botas, what about you? Oh, when you remember, you can just interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll see if I remember. So, the uh, however number I didn't bother to count, words that bring fear into Alan's heart. Oh. I've been playing some Pac-Man games. Okay. Pac-Man. Oh, yeah. okay. yeah. Pac-Man, uh, console Pac-Man. Or they're on the PC, sim. but they've been like released also on consoles. I'm talking about like um, C2, 256, mm-hmm. um, Pac-Man Museum, which is pretty much just a collection of 
other Pac-Man games like mm-hmm. the original and the first C and mm-hmm. any uh, Super Pac-Man in there? That was always yes. a weird one. <laughs> Super well, Pac- not, not as weird as Junior Pac-Man Junior. I like Pac-Man Junior, and that one actually isn't in the collection. Well, no, because there's you can't do a pinball machine. But oh, I was thinking the scrolling one when you said Pac-Man Junior. I there is a game. Yeah, he's yeah. right. He's, you're both right, I think. Uh, <laughs> might, fair I, enough. Fair I think enough. There's a machine called Pac-Man Junior, but the game Pac-Man Junior is also like that. Yeah. But no, I wasn't aware of uh, Pac-Man pinball game. Well, it's the weird thing is the Pac-Man Junior I'm thinking of was half video game, half pinball. Hmm. So, like at certain points, the game would shift from the the uh, monitor at the top down to the pinball feel at the bottom. That's cool. I only encountered it in the arcades like twice in other cities, and I like died almost immediately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, 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 I'm finding a Mr. and Mrs. Pac-Man pinball game. They called it maybe not Pac-Man Junior. Maybe they made maybe maybe, one, maybe. You know. I could be misremembering. I'm not. A, <laughs> this is, isn't my area of uh, collection expertise. Junior Pac-Man, maybe. So what'd you play? What you got? Pac-Man okay, in? so. <laughs> Or we also last week did mention Pac-Man CE um, Champion, DX yeah, yeah. Plus Championship Edition Deluxe Edition, whatever, like mm-hmm. CE DX Plus. Right. And also just Pac-Man CE, which in some ways is kind of like the last like true Pac-Man game because <laughs> CE DX is it's very... Like a, yeah. It's kind of like a, a racing game in some ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a puzzle game I was mm-hmm, thinking, yeah. but... <clears throat> Like, not really, like, puzzles and, like, blocks falling down, but it's, like, you figure out how you want to move, and then mm-hmm. you pretty much it's more about just making sure that you don't. <laughs> Which is sort of, like, the one issue that I've been having with CDX, and mm-hmm. slightly less so with DX2. It's just, you have to have a decent controller, I think, or maybe there's some sort of lag, but, like, there are times that when, like, the higher their score, they go faster, right. and mm-hmm. you reach a certain point where you press down or you know what you want to do and you press but you either just miss it or it doesn't seem responsive or something right. like that mm. and it's actually pretty forgiving except for there are a group of levels like the last group in CDX Plus called um, Big Eater or something like that mm. and I just kept running out of time because there are a bunch of like time challenges that mm. you've got oh, like I one time challenges yeah mm. and like most of them are actually again pretty forgiving like you can do it without issue but these like the last two or three, I just <clears throat> could not make it in time and just gave up. But again, we mentioned uh, CDX Plus, but I think this year it came out DX. I'm not sorry, not DX. C T- CE2, so Pac Man CE2, but mm-hmm. I keep wanting to call it DX2 because it's closer to <laughs> right, CDX2 right. than CE, that it's more a puzzle game. But this one, I think, adds way too many gimmicks that it doesn't quite even properly feel like Pac-Man. Like, what's the basic thing that happens usually when you hit a ghost in Pac-Man? You die. Yeah, in this, you just anger the ghost, and you have to actually (laughs) anger the ghost by hitting it too many times, and then if it'll touch you, you'll die, which Mm. is just... Like, this one holds your hand way too much. One of the cool things in Pac-Man CEDX Plus is that you have the ghost change, where, like, you go past sleeping close. Where on this one... Um, like, when you start eating the chain, like, you have to eat it from the um, head. Like, I'll even actually show you the trail, like, when right. you hit the power pellet. But as soon as you start eating the head, it just plays an animation. Yeah, like cutscene, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and have you played C2? I've, just, I've, seen in, in, I've seen it in action. I haven't played it myself. Yeah. I love the first CDX. But yeah, I really like uh, CDX Plus, or mm-hmm. just DX, yeah. whatever. But C2, it's not a bad game, but it just takes way too much stuff away. Again, the ghosts don't immediately kill you. They play an animation when you start eating the ghost versus the whole bomb thing from CDX Plus. Like, it used to just bring all the ghosts back to their home spot, but with this, it also brings you to their home spot Mm -hmm. because that's where the power pellets or level change thing will appear. And you also just have to go through this long tutorial which just hand-holds you through all the basics of Pac-Man. It's... It's not, again, a bad game, but unless you've already played C and CDX, uh, you should just play those first. And only when you've truly had your fill and you truly want something new and different, more Pac-Man, will I tell you maybe to go to C2. Oh, but, wow, look at that. Baby it's a Pac-Man. Baby Pac-Man, Pac-Man which is why I was misremembering <laughs> this Pac-Man Jr. Yes, Baby weird. Pac-Man. It's a 
really weird cabinet. That looks really cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, think right. I think that's the only, like, one where you actually... It's the only video or arcade game I've seen where you actually have to play switching back and forth yeah. in between. Sorry, we're looking at the uh, picture of the baby Pac-Man cabinet here. I recommend people look it up also because it's really cool looking. Yeah. So, um... Any other Pac-Man games? <clears throat> How about Miss Pac-Man? You play Miss Pac-Man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or that's like a sort of extra content for Pac-Man Museum. Like you have to actually pay for that, oh, <laughs> which kind of like sucks. Yeah, see, I think know why? Because you want Miss Pac-Man more than Pac-Man. <laughs> but um, actually, that does bring to mind like something briefly, even though I didn't play it recently. But the Genesis ports of Miss Pac-Man. It's mm-hmm. not even so much as a port of Miss Pac-Man. There's like tons of extra mazes, and there's actually a co-op two-player mode with that one. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just remember like ringing the bell and testing it out. So I do recommend people onto emulation or have a Genesis. I'm not sure if the SNES version's the same, but the, at least the Genesis or Master System version of Miss Pac-Man actually just has an insane amount of extra content that might be worth <laughs> Pac-Man fans yeah. checking yeah, okay, out. Cool. I know that. But talking about sort of co-op Pac-Man, Pac-Man Museum, and the whole reason why I actually went out of my way to like, check out Pac-Man Museum, is there's actually an arcade Pac-Man game, and it's also now released on consoles and whatnot, called Battle Royale, Royale Pac-Man, yeah. or Pac-Man Battle Royale, where it's like four-player Pac-Man, but they're actually trying to like either eat or knock the other players into Ghost. Mm-hmm. Huh. You can actually play against the computer, and it'll just be one computer opponent, but that's mm-hmm. not really that much fun. But this is really cool as a party game. Yeah, I played it at Barcade once. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. you get like really. Is that the one where you get like really big and you, yeah. you try to chase down the other Pac Man's? Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool yeah. version. <laughs> it's competitive Pac Man. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to co op. Yeah. It's more about eating the other people and killing them by uh, knocking them into ghosts than it is about eating the power pellets. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I seriously recommend people checking that out if they want a party game and they have got friends. If they're playing it on their own, though, it's not that much fun. Mm-hmm. Cool. And I believe that has the Pac-Man Museum collection. I think it's also been released on console, like as a downloadable content, but I'm not 100% sure, again, I was playing the PC version of it. But the Museum collection also has, I think it's called Pack Attack, where it's essentially Tetris, but with Pac-Man attached to it, something like that. It's pretty crappy, but it's yeah. interesting from a conceptual standpoint, just one or two games. Like, that's the weird thing about the Museum collection is... It's got a couple of, like really great classic games like the original Pac-Man as well as Pac-Man CE and Pac-Man um, Battle Royale. But it's also got Pac-Attack and Pac-N-Pel, which is kind of similar. Mm-hmm. It's like Pac-Mania and Pac-Land as well. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, side-scrolling Pac-Man game. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> some of those games aren't that great, but they're still kind of fun to experiment with and play if you haven't played them before. That's cool. And the last of the Pac-Man games I'll bring up is Pac-Man 256. I think this was originally a freemium game for cell phones, but has been ported Mm -hmm. for... The whole freemium aspect is really clear. It's essentially an endless runner where they're being chased by the glitch from the 256 Mm -hmm. level of Pac-Man. Yeah, I think it's by the Crossy Road team that made it. Uh, I'm not sure, but I guess you're right. I think think that's the case, but yes. (laughs) But, um... Have either of you played it? I have not. I've seen it in action. I haven't played it. It's kind of fun, but you've only got, like, one life at a time. They're essentially just trying to build as main points. But also the whole clear freemium aspect is in there that as you collect points and collect sort of, like, these extra sort of not-quite-money thingy on it, you then unlock mm-hmm. power-ups, and you've got, like, a whole bunch of power-ups that are available, but you can only choose, like, three at a time. Mm-hmm. And, like, laser and hurricanes and stuff like that. And again, it's a kind of gimmicking. Like, I do agree with the sort of grown, but it's also got that sort of freemium addictive nature for a while while they're, like, just trying to unlock stuff and see how far you so can So is get. it possible to, like, do the unlocks if you're just grinding yourself? I mean, like, what's the balance? I mean, you know, you can do the freemium games okay where, you know, you buy some extra stuff, like uh, Bloons. Like, Bloons TD5 did a good job of that, where, you know, yeah, there's stuff you can buy online, but it's more, you know, you can skip some stuff. But there's others like, uh, what was the... I can't, can't remember which one I think of at the moment. Oh, uh, the second version of um, Plants vs. Zombies, right. which just, like, totally ruined the mechanics because it was all about how can we get money out of people. And so, like, if you wanted to pay it without buying extra shit, you know, it just ruined it, and you have to grind forever. So, like, where does it lie on that continuum? 
Or I think the power-ups that initially gives you are pretty decent. I actually found a lot of the power-ups I was unlocking were kind of useless. Mm. So it's like a very grindy Patman, but those power-ups didn't really help tons, I felt. I felt the biggest issue with me playing it was just the fact that as you're going up the maze, or however direction you want to consider it, it's essentially like building it sort of, I guess, procedurally or like from sections and the ghosts are sort of just randomly being dropped mm -hmm. in sections of it. And it felt more like I was losing or winning more by the luck of where the computer mm -hmm. was just placing stuff oh, than gotcha. by my own skill. So like I just noticed that with a few exceptions, I was usually dying around five, six thousand points and then on a few rare occasions I'll do about 11,000 but that was about like my limit and then I'll usually be screwed over by a tight quarter with a bunch of ghosts around it or something. Yeah, and that's a problem when you're like trying to balance your game using external factors like so as opposed to trying to balance the game with itself during the course of play you're trying to like add the leverage of you know when you're putting money into the meter or whatever now, i mean like you go back to something like gauntlet of course that was exactly the same mechanic oh, yeah. they were trying to hit in the arcades or you know any arcade game where it's you know insert another quarter to continue mm -hmm. yeah but, but uh yeah there is a steam version of it i wonder if they, oh, yeah? how that's they the balance. pc version oh, i'm playing oh d that's so do I mean. you think it was so what so you paid for it though, right? As like a or can you can you so for the PC version, can you still buy extra credits for it, or is it just a standalone? Um, was just playing as a standalone. No, like no, but I'm, I'm asking like I do they? The Steam, I don't see on the Steam page. Yeah, so I'm not aware like of. Like okay, way. I was just curious. Was so, okay, no, cool. just to my understanding, just keep playing and unlock stuff as you just get okay, points. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I'm okay with that. So. <clears throat> it's kind of nice to like just play now and then for a while. Like I was enjoying it, yeah. mm -hmm. but. It's one of those things I think, again, the whole clear as the levels are being built up, it's more just the luck of the dice of what's coming up next as they're avoiding the mm -hmm. glitch maze being destroyed mm -hmm. aspect. And it felt like me actually figuring out how to play yeah. this game. Cool look to it, though. Yeah, cool, like, cool idea for a game for sure. Like the idea of the glitch coming up, the, you know, run for your life, <laughs> and some Pac-Man for your life. <laughs> Similar to the C and CDX games, where you can sort of change the skin, so you can change like the ghost as other sort of things or different looks to it. Right, so, as Batman. Yeah, interesting. So, it's if you can find it relatively inexpensive, I think it's just a. It's nice. two it's fifty on Steam right now. I think for the sale, the autumn sale. Yeah. So, so while well, it's on sale, yeah, I think it might be worth a try. So. Are done. Cool. Yeah, that's. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, before you go on, I remembered Paddington Bear. I, I watched that movie. <laughs> um, it, it's, I thought it was going to be weird. Um, it's not so weird. <laughs> it was Did that have Hugh Laurie in it? I'm trying to remember. Oh, you know, it's a good question. I didn't I'm actually trying, look on the remember. voice actors on that list, uh, but not, not as one of the, he okay. could be Paddington Bear. Yeah, I'm probably, mis I'm thinking something else. Yeah, but no, he's not, uh, Nicole Kidman is in it. Um, who else? Uh, Peter Capaldi is in it. Um, I don't know who voices Paddington Bear. I didn't check. Um, anyone else notable? Um, I don't think so. N not not anyone that that stuck out uh, for me. Uh, he, uh, Stuart Little. That was the Hugh Laurie one I was thinking. Oh, of. okay, got you. Um, but anyhow, so um, yeah, it was surprisingly not too bad. Mm. Um, but it is a weird movie. <laughs> uh, I, I love the books growing up, but I, th I'm just dubious about movies yeah, that as, try to resurrect franchises it, like that. It only I haven't this, watched it. Yeah, it only has nostalgia for me as a kid. Um, and I, I remember I might have had a Paddington Bear, like one or mm. something. I wasn't really you know, real obsessed about it as a kid. Um, but I definitely enjoyed it. Ooh, Peter, and Peter Capaldi would make an excellent Mr. Curry, I've got to say. Yes, he, he definitely uh, definitely did. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know. It was, it was pretty good. And um, I, I generally recommend it. It's available on Netflix, so that, that's how I watch it. Um, so, anyone's got Netflix, it's, uh, it's, you know, shouldn't put you out. Um, I was impressed... And I would say I was impressed because I didn't think twice about it, but the effects on the bears were actually really well done. Uh, nothing to a point where it made me think that's really fake. There was nothing attention getting about it. It just sort of fit in the universe. The only kind of weird thing that brought up in my mind is that everyone in the world just, ex uh, just sort of dealt with, uh, oh, there's a bear. 
that was it. That was about the level of thought they had. Not a talking, walking on its hind legs bear in London. Mm. Like, you know, that was not a surprising component to anybody. Um, it's, oh, he's a bear in a raincoat. <laughs> you know, that was it. That was about the extent of surprise on it. So, um, yeah, otherwise, pretty good. Okay, so, Bryce, what about you? What, oh. What's been going on? <coughs> oh, Just a brief thing that I was looking up. According to Wikipedia, for what it's worth, Paddington 2 is scheduled for release in 2017. Oh, really? Ooh, yeah. Holding okay. our breaths. <laughs> um, I, this is not a thing that I think... This is definitely not a thing I would rush out to go see in the theater. Um, but if it shows up in a place where it doesn't cost me anything extra like Netflix, I would watch it. So, um, okay. So, moving on from that, Bryce, what about you? Um, actually, uh, this is kind of timely for the since the Ghost in the Shell uh, live-action trailer came out uh, mm-hmm. recently. Uh, my girlfriend for my birthday got me a book, a real book, book <laughs> <laughs> called <laughs> Manga and Anime Go to Hollywood. Uh, I'm not too far into it yet, but I thought I'd bring it to pass around. People want to like, look into it. Yeah, okay. Um, cool. It basically talks about like sort of the influences of anime and manga on uh, Hollywood and so vice versa. Storytelling or yeah. on, like like the direction, composition. A lot of the development side of things he talks about in the pre. Like you, uh, that's where I'm, I'm not that far into it yet. Yeah, but yeah. he mentions in the preface like a lot of like you know sort of the challenges you have with trying to pitch anime as a movie in Hollywood and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Apparently, this guy he claims he's the one that got the, uh, James Cameron the idea to make a Battle Angel Alita movie. <laughs> so, uh-huh. oh really? Um, he, and he uh, teaches. He's a professor at the University of South Carolina, I believe, and he um, teaches like I guess one of the only manga courses uh, in the country. So, it's hmm. a very visual book. There yeah, are a, there's a picture on just about every other page. Yeah, and there's a lot of good footnotes too at the bottom that like explain yeah. things if you're not 100 percent like into the culture and understand. Looks, understands looks pretty anything. approachable. Yeah, I'm definitely going to read more of it. Yeah, um, it looks but good. It's cool. I'm going to take a look at it too. Uh, I can't speak to it being like amazing yet but it's been yeah. interesting so far so I would definitely keep reading it it's definitely like a type of book I would like to read I'm more of a non-fiction than a fiction guy when it comes to reading books um, hmm. but anyway um, so I watched more uh, t- I watched another episode of Tiger Mask W oh, and yeah. that's a that's a that's a show. I think I like it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of okay. I, I haven't watched any more yet myself. It does. You know, it's kind of okay. It's not pretending to be something it's not. Yeah, I'll tell exactly, you. Like, you know, exactly. you go into this show like you're going to want to see wrestlers or the wrestling, quote unquote. Even though it's not, it, they're it's like MMA with cage fighting without a cage. But uh, basically, it's yeah, wrestling. And they're going to they're pose at each other a bit. Yeah, and, you know, cut and, promos you know, and you know, have, have like a the, and, the uh, promoters, you yeah. know, doing some back scenes back and the stage. heels doing like breaking the rules and the ref going like, knock it off, he can't be in there. <laughs> it's yeah. like, so it's like, oh, it's good stuff like that. Yeah, so, exactly. So it kind of has the trappings of wrestling. That you kind of know how that sort of how a wrestling match normally plays out, mm. uh, like a traditional tag team match, for instance, like that. You know, you got like the hot tag, and like the guy is like so beat up, he gets the tag to Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask comes in, just wrecks house. He's really hot, and then you know. They do a good job of like and like you know the rule breakers will like, the other guy will jump in the ring and break up the pin or break up the submission hold. So it's 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 it, it fits those like things I remember from wrestling. Yeah. Well, even though they're obviously not there's no script <laughs> in the in Tiger Mask W's world, <laughs> um, but still I think it's if, if if that sounds like if it sounds like something you're interested in it's probably that. <laughs> so it, I don't think it'll let you down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't have a chance to watch much other um, anime this week though. Um, I was watching Nisekoi, my girlfriend I mentioned last weekend, and we started watching that, and I'm, we're enjoying that, but she's been away this week for the holidays. Mm-hmm. I started, uh, or I played a lot more of Titanfall 2's uh, multiplayer mm. mode, and um, I love it to death. Uh, it's really fun. It's um, much faster than Call of Duty uh, has ever been. Um, you know, there's a lot more maneuverability. Uh, it's usually five on five matches with other players. Uh, the player base on the PS4 is pretty good. Um, I haven't any trouble getting to the main modes matches. Um, there are a lot of modes, and I would say like during peak times, there's like about they say in my region like about twenty five thousand people usually playing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know in the PC it's had some it it, it is having uh, issues with people that um like this player count to be able to fill all the modes up and you know yeah which is kind of a bummer um, I guess that's still one of those things where it's like it's stuck in origin a lot of people don't want to really want to buy games on origin no um, y- as y- opposed actually to that's, that's one of my uh, lines yeah. I won't cross and I don't blame you I guess. <laughs> it's nice to have everything sort of one place mm-hmm. uh, Blizzard games are kind of like the one thing I'm like okay I'll install and battle man <laughs> y- you know I'd buy something standalone <laughs> before I'd buy it through origin yeah I know what you mean yeah so um, unfortunately that's the case with Titanfall 2 but um, yeah. this I mean the first one wasn't even a, never even came to the PS4 so I'm kind of glad you'll 
will play it at all. So um, is it uh, multiplayer only? I no, mean, there's actually a campaign. It's oh, there's actually around. a campaign. Yeah, interesting. A, a fairly interesting campaign. Um, yeah. not, it's not Shakespeare, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it, I would think so. It's, that, um, but, uh, uh, it goes some crazy places. Like, I was yeah. playing honestly, there's a whole level, like, mission where, like, you're basically in a dilapidated laboratory, um, and you don't know what happened there, but you get this ability to, like, shoot yourself back in time to when it's, like, full and, like, yeah. an active laboratory, and, like, people are like, oh, my God, we have an intruder. And you're like, oh, God, everyone starts shooting you, and you, like, go back and you go back into the present and, like, walk behind where they mm. were and then turn back to the past and shoot them in the head. And, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, walk so so does, cool. does the shooting feel good? I mean, it's, yeah, like, oh, yeah. Uh, really solid. If you, uh, yeah, if you like the way, like, it feels a lot like Call of Duty and that type of style. So are you, are you doing this on console? Yes, or on? yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. See, I can't play a first-person shooter using a controller. Well, you, um, yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, I just can't do it. Just yeah, but the, well, yeah, you wouldn't want to online anyway because it, on a PC because you'd be at a disadvantage probably yeah, against yeah. PC and mouse users. So, gotcha. uh, or, or keep keyboard and mouse users. Um, so it's cool. Has the, the Titans? They're all fun to play as. Um, nice. Different classes, lots of progression. You're always unlocking new stuff. It's very, um, it's just very satisfying, very fun to keep going with it. Yeah, oh, cool. Um, so hopefully the player base will stay up. And uh, they kind of put it in a weird place. They put it the week bef- after Call of Duty and the week, or the week after Battlefield One, and then the week before Call of Duty. Ooh, that's rough. Infinite Warfare. So it was kind of stuck in a weird spot. Um, but I, I, it's, it's not really good. And um, you know, it's not as fast as like Quake, old school Quake was, and stuff like that. But like, it's just fast from like a Call of Duty standpoint. Like you can wall run, slide, all other right, stuff, right. and then you know, jump on enemy Titans, steal their battery, Ooh, <laughs> enemy's yeah. battery, and put nice. in one of your friends' Titans, and they get like a overshield, and you get bonuses for doing that. So it's cool. and it, it encourages teamwork too, even without that much voice check. Because believe me, I don't want to talk to anybody online <laughs> on PS4. <laughs> so I anybody talks matter what they say, I mute them. <laughs> it's my rule with these type of games. Yeah. Um, I, we can do just fine not talking. <laughs> um, and then I pl- I played uh, the first I'm like 25 percent into uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, oh, okay. uh, which finally came to PS4 um, this year. It was an Xbox One timed exclusive mm-hmm. and PC exclusive. Um, did you play the first uh, the first reboot? Not the first. I, I played the first reboot. Yeah, actually, like, I never yeah. finished it, but yeah. I, I've been meaning to get back to it. It was uh, it was reasonably good. Uh, yeah, I, I would sort of say like it wasn't like anything particularly special, but just a really well made game, and yeah, yeah. certainly have a lot better than solid. anything before that Tomb Raider franchise. Oh, yeah. I don't have any love for. <laughs> well, you know that's that's a franchise that I just bounced off of all the way along. I tried yeah. playing it a couple times and just didn't work for me. And just her like in her booty shorts and gigantic. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's just like everything about it. And the fact yeah. she became like this like, weird like sex icon in the video game industry for like a decade <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not sad to see that style go <laughs> with a more realistic Lara Croft um, so this game's cool uh, has more tombs to be raided so the name is a little more um, yeah, accurate um, and you're this time you're in like a really cold you're in like um, the mountains I forget where you are trying to find some treasure before the organization does um, that's the story's a little cliche but the action's sure. really good uh, they really put a bunch more emphasis on like like uh, gathering resources and crafting stuff especially on the fly in the middle oh, of the battle interesting. and they do it very quickly so like you kind of hold on a button you find like a can you got like a thermite cold, like you've been collecting it's like you get a can it's like okay quickly craft this bomb under pine cover toss the can over it explodes and no, stuff like that cool. so um and it's it's kind of like one of those games i like where it's like stealth unless you have to go until you go loud and then you go loud <laughs> um so that's good i mean if it can support both play yeah, styles yeah. Yeah, you could definitely get through without being spotted in some areas some areas are just like the story made it seem like your you know, enemies bust in on you and you're like oh god and you know, that's yeah the, the, the yeah. downfall with a lot of those games though is when you get like a boss fight or something it makes you go loud mm-hmm. and it just like feels like you know it's no longer letting you play your way yeah there's not really a boss yet no that's good like that um i mean i you know, yeah. bosses are another thing that i've just never <laughs> enjoyed coming from the pc side of things right, or right, the, yeah, yeah. before that the home computer side of things <laughs> So um, I, I think it's cool. Um, okay, cool. It looks really good, and I'm sure it looks even better on yeah, PC. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick so, it up eventually. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. You like the first one, and definitely finish that. Okay, and go, yeah, yeah. go ahead and finish this one. Um, once again, I don't know if it's anything like... I don't know if I really call it like best of breed. It's just a really well-made game, and I think that... Well, there's best a, there's of, a place for that, Yeah, too. right, exactly. And <laughs> so. Particularly if the campaign isn't too long. No, it doesn't You know, just a, you know, a game you can spend some time with, enjoy, and put away. That's, that, that, you know, that's, that's cool. Yeah, they lock, They have me clocked in at 25% right now on my progress, and I'm probably like four hours in? So oh, okay. Yeah, that's, hours, that's, so that's, that's a pretty, good, that's pretty solid yeah. game. It's, it's so. the same way the first one was. It's open, but not open world, so you can like travel back to old campsites. and like. Gotcha. But there's, they don't, there's not really a huge incentive to do that unless you really are a completionist. But yeah. you don't have to do that to complete the game, so I, that's kind of where I'm okay, okay with cool. it that way. And that's about it for me. So. Okay, Okay. Paul. what about for me? So I didn't have like a lot of stuff this week because I took the opportunity of this holiday to... 
deal with my desk and like mm-hmm. the 13 years of cable accumulation under oh, my desk most specifically and i have to say that was a fucking nightmare <laughs> wow <laughs> so i mean i just there was like a gigantic trash can full of cables that i've removed that were not actually connected to anything mm-hmm. after i had everything back hooked up again these are not bad cables i'm not throwing them away it's just sort of the size of the, right. the disaster mm-hmm. area so i got everything neatly velcroed uh, but that was like a three-day project to get everything mm-hmm. actually reassembled and taped together and like going to mm-hmm. yeah going to i had to do a trip i moved to one of the machines and yeah. so it was like two feet farther away than it had been before because it was like just stuck yeah. next to a chair mm-hmm. so i had to do a trip to micro center to get extra cable it's like 200 bucks just to buy some cables i i, I and, and you know if i had if i waited I did to order them online. It would have been like 50 bucks, but it was like, I just need to get this done. So, <laughs> so during this process, I could not actually like watch anything with subtitles. So what oh, I really? did is I basically, well, because I was like under my desk and like oh, across God, yeah. the room. So, so I basically listened to Star Trek Next Generation as audio plays. <laughs> oh, really? So that That's was cool. like 26 episodes of Star Trek, <laughs> like from mid- middle of the first season up through oh, really? all, almost all of the second season. It took you that long. What's that? It took you that long? It took long? me three days. So I oh, started, really? I started on, on Thanksgiving Day mm-hmm. and Saturday night, I finally like was getting the last bit of stuff cleared out because I also like cleared out all of the shelves by my desk right. and so on. You know, all the junk drawers with uh, bits of cables and everything. CDs and all Yeah, ones. exactly. <laughs> floppy disks and floppy disk drives and power supplies for things that are dead. Mm-hmm. But you can get 250 free hours of AOL. Oh, no, it wasn't quite that bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was that was the previous house, but... Yeah. So, but um, the anime I did watch before that uh, was I decided to revisit Cooking Master Boy. I don't know what that is. So we actually <laughs> did a show on this okay. quite a while back. Maybe so Cooking up. Master Boy is a uh, obviously a cooking anime uh, based on a manga set in China, um, and it's all about Chinese food. So it's kind of in the uh, vein of Yakitate Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's uh, not quite as wacky in terms of the reaction sequences. Uh, the first season is super solid. So, like, I really enjoyed rewatching that first uh, season, or the first Kura, I guess. I'm not sure where the actual season is. But, like, that first 13 episodes or so, mm-hmm. really good. Uh, unfortunately, the second season, they add in, like, a stupid mascot character, just like an annoying guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, young kid, and he's, like, a perv. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I'm so I I'm about halfway through my rewatch. I'm at episode 26 out of 50, 51, somewhere in there. Oh, it's an older anime. Yeah, it's like 2003, oh, yeah. or is it 1997? 1997, 1997. okay, yeah, yeah. But so, I'm going to come out here much later. Yeah. So, but, you know, I've been enjoying it. It was actually um, the uh, the Chinese cleaver I picked up that inspired me. Because oh, cool. It's got, like, a good picture of a Chinese mm-hmm. cleaver on the, the cover of the first volume of the manga. So. Nice, I see it right there. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. No, but it's good. So, that's it for me. Okay, um, so I got a loot crate. Uh, you guys want to open that up? Maybe. You want to take a look at that guy? What's in it for me? Uh, there might be something <laughs> in it for you. Okay. Um, I will say, though, the figurine, I think, is going to go to Matt. He's not here, but I think it should go to him. Um, hey, he he's misses out, and he shouldn't be <laughs> out throughout the spoils. Uh, maybe guys battles of the Q death. Q fig of Doctor yeah. Strange. Yeah, he, he liked Doctor Strange the movie. A lot. Um, I I definitely think he liked it. I I don't really recall. Um, Q. I don't remember seeing it with him, so I'm not sure that I I really have like a solid impression of him. If not, then it'll be open for uh, discussion <laughs> next week. Um, you could probably take it out of the box because you got other stuff. In there. Okay, sure, that's or, yeah. you, you I just meant like office. for the sake of. Uh, well, um, yeah, yeah, and well, I, I won't take any real great pictures of it. I took it uh, of the box. Uh, so if, if we open it up next week, someone has it. It has a home. Then I'll take better pictures of it. Um, the Elder Scrolls Online pin, which you should keep because that might go yeah. away soon. <laughs> so so, it so the, an item the, the, the pins uh, I always keep because that's for the loot crates. So uh, it's like more recent pins, like the last like year or so, they've been a lot better quality I think than the original pins. Well, sure. I mean, these, because they're making like little metal pins now. Yeah. So so this week's theme is not turkey, it's not Thanksgiving, it's magic. 
uh, or magical, actually, specifically. Um, hey, time with their family is magic. Sure. Yes, indeed, I guess. <laughs> There's Depends. a book. I, it's a, I'm not sure if it's a notebook or if it's an actual I believe book. it's a notebook. There okay. is a... There's the From General Loot Crate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's the General Loot Crate magazine um, that... Uh, I'm talking about this thing. The yeah. Game oh. of Thrones thing. Night is dark and full of yeah. terror. So if you take a look in the Loot Crate magazine, it will tell you what's what. And the reason they put it there. Um, well, we can't open up the book because it's covered in... No, not the book, the magazine. <coughs> ah. Oh, yeah, it's in cellophane, that's true, yeah. But I believe it's a notebook. I think that's what I read in the magazine. Um, so right now, the Q-Fig, Paul, is going to go to to Matt. Okay, that's Unless cool. he objects next week, and then uh, then, then it'll be determined who which one of you wants to have you it. Do you want to read the t-shirt? I don't know what it's referencing, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, I don't either, and Olivier I think that's why... Recruit now. Yeah, uh, let me take a picture of you of the month. holding that. Whatever uh, MAC USA is. Yeah, I I don't know. Know. Over this way. Oh, wait, uh, Fantasy Beasts? Fantasy Beasts. Uh, coming up, Obliviator. Obliviator is a Harry Potter, isn't it? Oh, no, it's from Fantasy Beasts, the movie. Isn't that the... Isn't that oh, the there Harry, you go. Fanta- Harry po- Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts. Beasts. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It is fant- okay, ah, there, there you, you go. go. I figured it out. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you read the book? No. Uh, the magazine? Uh, oh. Read the magazine. Take a look. Does oh, anyone want the t-shirt? I'm not. Uh, there's, a, there's a comic called um, Big Trouble in Little China, Escape from New York. That's just what it is. No, it's called the comic book. <laughs> 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 I don't think this is... <laughs> okay, yeah, the magazine thing that I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what that's about. What is, this? is this a journal? Okay. It mm. kind of seems thin. Like, it doesn't seem as thick as a comic book usually oh, is. Oh, got you. So, um, is, well, this, so the, is this a crossover? The, I don't know. The uh, <laughs> comic? I mean, Big Trouble in Little China, yeah. Escape from New York. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose you could mash those two up, and it would be basically the same movie, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everything is open except for the, the Q-Fig. Uh, so if anyone wants a comic, anyone wants a notebook, anyone wants a T-shirt, you guys are more than welcome to I'll it. I'll take the journal. Um, okay. Okay, cool. The All journal? right. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> else you can open it up and yeah. find out if it actually is blank on the inside. <laughs> I believe it is. Okay. And then comic? Uh, I don't know. I have a lot of comics to read. <laughs> This yeah, one, probably. This just one's not <coughs> ranking high. Oh my You'll probably grab that. <laughs> uh, and then I don't know what's special about yeah. the box this month. I know both of us like to take a look. Um, and then T-shirt is open. Anyone wants a great? If not, it'll go into uh, sort of the stockpile of things. Or it's like all sorts of like jars with like hands and brains and magical type uh, potions. So it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it is a big box. It's a wee theme this year. I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I don't know. A month. Um, we should, we definitely okay. should make an effort to um, do something about a contest next year. Um, not, uh, not uh, <laughs> what we did. What was it? We did uh, the karaoke with Bryce. Oh, dear God. I like someone write in. <laughs> write an email for us and get a prize. And uh, that's our contest. Yeah. <laughs> Give us feedback. Uh, we could do, we could do the, uh, the character in the envelope again. Yeah, we should mm-hmm. come sign right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so okay. Fresh, if yeah. You will. <laughs> so um, we're going to run a break. We'll be back in just a moment with this week's topic. Hi, I'm Kyle Carosa, the Kyle of TV's Kyle, and you're listening to Otaku Generation, and I'm playing with my chicken bear. Book, book, book. <laughs> Big, big, big and we are back from break with this week's topic, which is. Magi, the labyrinth of magic. Okay, so what's the actual? So magi is technically plural. What's the? What, what is singular <laughs> okay, magi? So it should be magus or mag, magus. Uh, magus. Would be the singular. Uh, magi or magi should be plural. That's if you're like doing actual Latin. This is not actual Latin. This is Latin filtered through another language. So, so singular is magi, and the translators seem to think that plural is magis. So I was twitching all over the place, <laughs> but you know, you just gotta sit back. And drink roll with it. Yeah. Okay. So, what do we need to know, and where shall we start? Um, okay. So, this is a story that borrows a lot of elements from uh, Thousand and One Arabian Nights. That the one yeah, it's, yeah. Right so, it's, so it's a fantasy series based off a of manga, and like it's not the same generic fantasy world as all of them. It's got this sort of desert setting. To right. It. You got a lot of characters named after the Thousand Nights and the Night. Yeah. Like your Sinbad, you got like Baba, Aladdin. Yeah. Um, 
So this is based off of, this is kind of a shonen, uh, I should say, it's an action adventure shonen series. Uh, the manga ran in weekly shonen Sunday. It still is, I believe mm. it's a weekly um, manga. Has it uh, hit any uh, major hiatuses? Or? No, I don't think it has, actually. Um, but I do know, I feel like I read somewhere, I'll have to double check that make sure, but I swore I read somewhere that it reached its final arc, which can go on for a while, but <laughs> it is there's an end in sight um, for this, which is always good, because you know, a lot of these series can turn people off because they're like, well, when's it going to end? <laughs> I'm mm. we can start Anyway, so this is, takes place in a, like sort of an Arabian-inspired world where there are these beings called magi, and we're just going to call them that because <laughs> that's what they yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> um, And a magi is not someone who's going to become king. It is someone who is going to basically choose someone to guide and uh, train and you know sort of help them become a king. Um, and Aladdin, our like first principal character, is one of those magi. He's like a young boy, and we're talking pretty young here. Yeah, he's young enough that I think he gets a female voice actress. Yes, yeah, yeah. He's he, I don't know how old he actually is off the top of my head, but yeah, I would say younger than teens, probably. Yeah, 10, I think even. ten to twelve, yeah. somewhere in there. Twelve, like the oldest. Yeah, and he sort of hooks up uh, through happenstance with Ali Baba, which is sort of the other principal character of the three. Um, who clearly let's let's not let's not <laughs> let's not make spoilers. Say like this, it's clear the dynamic between the two. Like, like Alibaba was going to become, um, you know, I guess, Magi's candidate or uh, Aladdin's candidate for king. That he's going to mm-hmm. help rise up. Uh, and the story kind of takes place in a world where these things called dungeons uh, sort of have randomly started to appear um, without much explanation yet. At least where I'm at, I know you've gone farther, yeah. so you probably <laughs> know the origins of these things potentially. Or yeah, they do explain all this mm-hmm. stuff, but it takes about two hundred some chapters yeah. into the manga <laughs> to actually get to. So, the- so for me, the dungeon aspect, yeah. So so it's like you know, the, it starts off like at, at least for the anime that all the characters were going to go into the dungeon. So yeah, it takes a long, l- lot longer than the manga, but from the, it, it really feels like the dungeons were an early conception in terms of the world building the manga mm-hmm. author was doing yeah. that like didn't really end up being a an important part of the world or they and he had to keep them in there and he did stuff with them yeah. but it's they could could have been more cleanly edited out i think I, I I don't think the dungeon dive is the most interesting part of the story yeah. for sure. Um, I think the uh, because I mean all your time the, the author is clearly much more interested in the political stuff, right? And, and that's some more interesting stuff know, for grand sure. Strategy. Um, and I think some good fights happen in the dungeons, but it's not because of the dungeons. It's usually because someone else went into the dungeon with them, and then they end up having a fight in there as yeah. showdown. But and the fights are good. I mean, that's yeah. I think the strongest suit of this series is the action. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I every time one of the you know the heavy duty action sequences came on the screen. And I was really enjoying it. Yeah, um, and th- that goes back to the third principal character, Morgiana, who is a. Mm. Um, I guess originally she's a from this uh, dark continent. That's very like a, the race of people there from there. And uh, the, the race who conquered the dark continent. Right, right. So she's from there, and but I guess she at an early age was enslaved, um, and never. She didn't really. Uh, but that's what they tell you, but you, it, the actual truth is revealed to be something oh, different. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, but anyway, she starts out, we meet her as a slave to this asshole who's like, you know, he's been a slave all her life. And through the events of the first dungeon dive, and essentially, like, because this guy ended up in there with them, with Alibaba and Aladdin, and she basically frees her. She finally, like, it's, frees herself both physically and mentally because she's kind of emotionally attached as a slave because she's lived one that is all her life. Mm-hmm. So it takes a little while before she, like, realizes. Except for Alibaba's, like, hey, yeah, we're in a dungeon right now. We conquered this thing. These guys are going to go away forever. <laughs> no one's going to ever know you were a slave. <laughs> like, how about it? She at first, like, has trouble with that concept, but then finally, you know, steps up and they get out of there. And she comes to the third, th- third main character, I guess, of the three. Um, and she's like a kind of physical brawler, uh, Lisa Fur. She had some magic to her repertoire later on, but um, originally she's just an ass kicker. <laughs> and <laughs> she's a pretty serious ass kicker, yeah, too. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, one of the episodes we were, we were rewatching tonight yeah. where she takes down like an entire gang of thieves. Yeah, and like, and, like five, five people. Poison the saber to the tiger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, those are that, that's good stuff to watch. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, I wish I watched more of the anime. I was actually focusing a lot on the manga because I really, that's how mm. I like to read these stories. But um, from what I saw the anime, I do think it, it's it's pretty good and the action is, is nice. Um, and I like the, the political aspect of it, too. Like, the idea of, like, what makes a good king, you know, or a good kingdom? How's the kingdom best rule? How's it prosper? And you get a lot of that with sort of, like, you kind of get, like, kind of the... They kind of build up, like, Sindaria as, like, sort of the ideal kingdom because the country... 
at least at first, is like I don't know if it gets if something happens later on, but it seems like it's a very prosperous country that like you know, it and it's a lines of countries that are very much about peace and like not you know conquesting against people. Um, and Sinbad's a very loved uh, king. He's like the other principal character we meet later on. And who gets his own spin-off series. Yes, which I have... Which is a prequel as well. He is a prequel, yeah. But they do, now reading it now, knowing that there is like a spin-off prequel for him, I can see why they they were definitely seeding that mm. with some of like, they were like, sort of like with some mini flashbacks. You're like, well, I could definitely see them expanding upon that in like a prequel. Like whenever they go like into mini flashbacks of his like, usually it's like two panels of his like past, how he became a king. And also, he did conquer seven dungeons and has right, right. So, and I guess one of the only two that has conquered more than one dungeon, right yeah. now at this point. Yeah. So, yeah, and conquering dungeons is the way you get power in this world, right? Because at the end of the dungeons is a, is a dijin or a, g- a genie, a jin, yeah. yeah, a jin or a, g- a genie, and he um, basically will decide who gets his power based on who made it to the end, and will sort of infuse itself into a weapon uh, or an item of the uh, the candidate. And then those items can then be, like, you, you can use the power of these items to then, like, pass it down to, like, what they call household vessels, which are basically, like, your top brass, like, the king's top brass who has the item that, like, can then, like, sort of imbue power into their items. Not at the same level as the king's, but still powerful. Um, so, like, I, I guess an example is, like, so King, uh, king uh, Sinbad showed a lot of lightning magic, um, and I guess he was able to pass on, like, a, the ability to, like, one of his, another, um, the race that uh, Morgan is a part of, his body. The analysis. Yeah, exactly. Like the ability to like stimulate his muscles electrically to like make him, you know, be able to I guess, move faster, basically. Even though mm. it does at the cost of him not being able to move after he uses it for a while. So stuff like that. Um, so I think it's a pretty cool action series. I think it kind of does a good job of variety. Um, you know, we get the really physical brawn with Morgiana. You get, like, kind of straight-up magic stuff with Aladdin and his fights. And then you get kind of a hybrid of the two with Alibaba. Although I think my favorites are probably Morgiana and Aladdin's. Alibaba hasn't quite stepped it up to the next level for me. But uh, at least not yet in the manga. But he's still entertained, though. I shouldn't say I don't like seeing him fight. Mm. Yeah, the uh, first... Uh, season, like the first 25 episodes, it's mainly him just sort of finding his place. Right. Like, it's okay enough as a fighter to survive up to that point, but right. he doesn't really know how to truly be a great fighter. Yeah, and like use his equipment properly. Like, he learns that um, fairly slowly <laughs> in the hour and go, and it's like, it seems like Morgana and Aladdin kind of uh, blossom a lot quicker. Um, one thing I like about the series also is the storytelling. They're not afraid to do some skips. Like, like that, you know, like, and six months pass, or something like that. Like, it's not, like, this big event, like, the time skip that everyone will talk about, because there's been a lot of them, and they mm-hmm. aren't really all that long, usually. Um, you know, six months, maybe a couple months, something like that. And I think that's good for the story, because it kind of gets things going and keeps things moving, which I think is kind of a a strength of the series, for, for me, at least. I mean, do you agree? Or you... Or, yeah, or I think when I was originally watching the first season, like, I was bringing up, there's a sense of, like, scale to this world. Mm-hmm. right. Like, they originally start out in, like, this one city, but again, it's, like, in the desert, this is dealing with a very primitive culture. They don't have cars or planes. Right. Most people just have to take caravans with pseudo-camel-like creatures, and mm-hmm. people just walking mm-hmm. across either long deserts or long oceans. And right. So there'd be a distance from them going from point A to point B, so for the mm-hmm. most part... There's right, not really right. going to be much story from there, except for maybe one quick little adventure dealing mm-hmm. with some bandit tribe after that, and it's like right. four months later. And and, the, and those that time also helps strengthen the characters so they can step up to the next level because like you know they're training usually during yeah. that time as well. So you know it makes the increase in strength of the characters a little more believable than they see like in a lot of series, maybe like other show <laughs> series where it's like kind of like unless it's like a big time skip but like all of a sudden like in desperation they learn like a huge power up but here it feels a little more um like training based um without showing a ton of training which is kind of nice hmm. um i think for me it's more just interesting from the sense that like yeah here is this whole world where right. it takes and i think that's uh, that's a weird thing like i don't think one piece does a very good job of like they don't establish like how long it takes from the island to island for them they kind of just like there's no like and two weeks passed or something like this like there isn't that sense of that and that I think kind of makes the world it well the world seems mad just because it's been such a long series but not because they've like I don't think he'd written it to make it seem like a big world early on it felt very small and contained early on so but anyway not to go home on one piece but anyway I think I think I agree Magic does a good job of like creating the world 
um, right off the bat that like, hey, this is a pretty big world with a lot of politics going on, a lot of places unexplored, and a lot of mysteries. The first season pretty much deals with um, Sinbad, Sindaria, Sindaria, and also the uh, Kyo Kyo mm-hmm. country. Yeah. Even though it's not so much them directly with the first season, it's more about them manipulating things and what's behind right. the scenes and making Alibaba's home country. Uh, Bell bad, bell bad. Yeah, bell bad. Yeah, I think it's going cool. like going to economic ruin. It's right. not help that mm. the current leader is a bit of an incompetent. Yeah, kid. yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess, I guess there is like an evil organization behind the shadows. And I feel like we probably should just talk about, like, mention them at least. Like, there is like Al Samarin is the name of them, I believe, but they change their name all the time, apparently. Um, and they kind of work in the shadows, and their prime directive, I guess, is to manipulate kingdoms to, I guess bring strife upon the world. I don't really know if they ever, I don't know if they really talked about their main mission, like what the, what's their end game here? But. Or they get into that in the second okay, season yeah, near yeah. the end. Mm-hmm. They're trying to create more and more of the black Ruku, Roku oh, okay. magic yeah. um, butterfly things that right. would like force. And if they accumulate enough, they can summons a really horrible, horrible creature. Okay, right. Yeah, sense. so I, I mean, this is kind of getting into now now my main objection or mm-hmm. problems with this series, which is that all the villains in this are basically, ha ha, we are villains and we're we're slave traders and we're going to trade slaves and we're really evil and so we're going to laugh evilly. And I mean, all the characters end up feeling pretty much one note. I mean, they do a little yeah. better job with this with the main characters, uh, but for the most part, everybody they're fighting against is like, ha, we're a dick, you know, and you're going to fight us because we're a dick and we're just going to do dick stuff. I mean, the, the motivations aren't really well thought out. I think a lot of the minor villains are that way, but like with uh, the Kyo Country Princess and a couple of other like more heavy villains are... Antagonists. Yeah. 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 That, aren't that's, so much villains, they're more like antagonists, yeah. like, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like Jajar, the... Uh, Dark match eye. Yeah, yeah. Or. Yeah, he, he was coming across, so I was, I, I'm trying to remember, it's been a long time since I watched first season of Magi before this, and so we were watching a few episodes to refresh mm-hmm. our memories before this, and I was enjoying that. So yeah, he was coming across pretty well f- in the yeah, episode yeah. three watch. I really so. like that fight between him and the lab. I thought it was a pretty fun fight. And yeah, the use and, of the and his reactions in that, I think, yeah. were particularly good. It's more, um, you know, he's, yeah, he's a dick, but he's yeah. he's not a one-note dick. And they start going to, like, the, at least where I'm in the manga, they're starting to go into, like, the, the I guess, the, all the princes and princesses of the Kyo Empire, and, you know... And that's a pretty complicated yeah, backstory with all Yeah, very complicated with all of them. And, like, none of them come off as, like, pure evil. Like, it's clear they all have in their own intentions and alliances and allegiances, but there's also, like... I guess I guess that's what you mean, because, like, the main bad guy organization, the al are, like... They are kind of like, ah, we're evil. <laughs> we want to <laughs> turn the world to strife, but yeah, and like Morgiana's owner is—he's yeah. basically just, I am a bad guy. Yeah, well, he's gone two episodes. Yeah, so well, like, I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess, fair, I guess, enough. fair enough. And same with the other that that the, was other the one episode that slave trader was watched, in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ha I'm a slave trader. That's 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 early shown in uh, series stuff. Like, yeah, and <laughs> I, I I can definitely see that. So actually, one of the things that rewatching this, so I was not really on board with this series by the end of the first season. Mm -hmm. Uh, But one of the things this rewatch has done is said, okay, maybe I do want to continue and watch some of the second season. Right. It reminded me of what was good about it. And so they do do list the the two seasons as separate. Like, so, Magic the Labyrinth of Magic is the name of the manga, but it's also the name of the first season of the anime, and Kingdoms of Magic is the Uh, second one. But I believe the manga all along just stays Magi the Labyrinth of Magic, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of like a Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Um... Yeah, so I want to. So I guess the, the, I kind of want to talk about this because it's the one thing that really just irks me a lot is this, is Aladdin's like personality quirk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. this is like this thing where he like is kind of pervy and like kind of jumps into breasts and like especially if they're large. Well, yeah, actually, it, if it, they're large, as we all do it. it. <laughs> And it gets a lot of screen time. There's yeah. a lot of Aladdin rubbing himself against some girl's breasts. As, yeah. And it's like the character's looking on benignly as yeah. this happens. And, like, I just think it undercuts him as a character so much. Because, like, he is young and naive for sure. But he also comes off as very wise throughout the series, even though he's naive in a lot of ways, if that makes any sense. Like, he usually has something very, you know, smart to say or very, you know... <laughs> You know, wise is what I'm trying to go for, and but like to have him do that is like uh, I don't get it. It's like he's not pervy any other time, but is one for like two comic panels. We need to have a comic relief thing or something. Well, and, and that's actually gets down to sort of 
I, I think the weakest aspect of this series as a whole is Aladdin. Hmm. I mean, I like his battles. I mean, I yeah. like his combat. But, like, as a, a personality, as a character, he just is very inconsistent. He's yeah. both super powerful and he's very naive and he's pervy and, like, all these things that you aren't quite sure which one he's going to be displaying from scene to scene. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, so like he's super powerful, but no, no, he's been captured by slavers, and yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it, or big rocks dropped on him. So, so he, so like his development arc doesn't seem as clear to me. Like right. you know, Alibaba, you can see him yeah, sure. sort of coming into his own, but Aladdin is just kind of all over the place. They do get a little better at that during like a. They're not afraid also to split the characters up um, a couple times, and they yeah. do like if they are getting a little better with that. Although I don't think they've fully solved that problem. So that's far. more the second season, right? Okay, yeah, but th- he does end up going on a little bit more of a development arc, um, on like you know as a like magician. Goes to magic school, yeah, basically goes to magic <laughs> wow. school, but um, not as lame as it, that sounds. Actually. It's actually kind of an interesting place because it's right. a very aggressive country. <laughs> but anyway, the um. He, because he only knows how, because they they go into like the aspect of like you know, there's actually just like generic like mago, which is the those little butterflies uh, manipulation, actual mm-hmm. like magic magic where you use element, you fuse elements into it, and we saw that in the fight with Jadel because he can only like you know like Aladdin was just like sort of shooting generic blasts at him while yeah. You know, Jadal could do like ice, you know, ice uh, spears mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, so he kind of gets more into that. He starts. It starts out with training in the first season. I think of one of the generals of a uh, Sindaria, one of Sinbad's top uh, p- people. She's a magician because there are like there's like levels of magic users. There's like your common people don't really have magic at all. They need to use equipment to be able to bring anything out, like to manipulate magic. And there's magicians who actually just cast spells, and then there's the magi that are you know they can just like they have like kind of almost an yeah, unlimited reserve. Yeah. yeah. He can like absorb magic, like from Mago Magoi. from other people yeah. or other things, and kind of gives him like he's just kind of like a rechargeable battery that way. But the magi really aren't a class of people; they're really just an element right, yeah, that's yeah. actually part of this world. There was usually three of them each There's- era, yeah. And Aladdin's appearance is very bizarre. To especially Jadal brings it up because like, why is there a fourth magi? There's never been in a fourth one before. Yeah. So what's the deal, Sinbad? <laughs> it's just like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Um, in the manga, and I guess probably in the second season more, or maybe the end of the first season, they start to develop by Sinbad a little bit more because, like, he comes off at first as it's like he's just this like great guy doing everything out of the goodness of his heart, but like he kind of like comes off a little more like manipulative later on it, for the greater good in his mind. But you know the way he kind of plays with that princess's heart from the Co Empire, yeah. like he mm-hmm. uses her a little bit. Um, some other examples, like you know, he, he kind of like admits that like he brought Alibaba and Aladdin to Sadaria because like. You know, it would increase you know having influence over them and having them present would increase in Daria's power overall, stuff like that. So, and even more stuff happens in the second mm-hmm. season that show that he's much more morally ambiguous. Right, right, yeah. Because you know, I would it, as a one note like cool guy hero, it, it, he is a little lame in, at first, but I think you know he gets he get, he he develops a lot more because more three dimensional. Um, and maybe I don't know. I'd be curious how this how the spin off manga or the series as well um, develops that as, in, in, as well so so any um, yeah, what else did you guys like or dislike <laughs> uh, I think the animation as a whole is quite good mm-hmm. I mean this is a, a nice series to watch I mean some of the character designs um, undoubtedly during the manga are a bit uh, off I yeah. mean, deliberately, like uh, what is it, Alibaba's brother, who's the king, and oh, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they just toss in a few things like that that just don't really no, fit, no. and that's okay. I mean, it doesn't really interfere with the story too much. Yeah, they but, will also have these gag moments where all the characters look super deformed. That's yeah, just yeah. being wacky, oh, yeah. especially when like Alibaba first sees like a large breast. He starts <laughs> to get like his like weird like puppy dog eyes, yeah. and like can't see his face anymore. Yeah. It's just his eyeballs, like. Yeah, it's, Man, it's the weird. series just would have been so much stronger without that because it just like it. comes out of it doesn't fit in with the yeah. rest of the tone of the show. It yeah. wasn't until you pointed out and I saw him doing it that it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Um, and then you make a very good point. It seems to be uh, a component or a facet about him that doesn't seem to be needed at all. Like you see at festivals, like Sinbad's like surrounded by beautiful women because like you know he's a charmer. You know he's sw- he's smooth. Like you know he can I can see that happening. But like the fact that, like Aladdin's like and also Sinbad's not so like abrasively perverted about it. Like I mean, Aladdin just like goes diving in, but he's a kid, so it's okay. Or something. I don't know. It's very I, I don't. I don't think it's needed. 
No, oh, no, I don't think so either. Um, there are some funny moments, though. Um, I really like that moment where, like, Alibaba was, like, checking himself for injuries or something like that at one point after a battle. And he was, like, bending over, <laughs> like, yeah. with his butt to the door, like, mm. looking. And, like, Morgana just didn't knock and walked in. And she didn't knock, so <laughs> in his defense, and it saw him doing that and, like, dropped what she had and was like, what? <laughs> oh, I thought that was pretty funny. I don't know. <laughs> just because it was, like... It could happen. She should have knocked. I'll tell you that. <laughs> to get this walk in someone's room. You don't know what they're doing. They might be checking their butt for injuries. Or <laughs> <something>. <laughs> no, right, right. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to keep reading it. Uh, I think that I... Well, I guess I'm probably... You, you've watched the whole second season? Yes, I have. That? And you think it's it can just be it's well animated, like it does a good job of representing the manga? Yeah, I personally enjoyed the second season more, but mm-hmm. you have to watch the first season because it introduces all the characters right, in the world right, right, and the right, situation. Yeah. So I might just start with... Now that I'm sure I'm past the first season's content in the manga fully, I'll probably maybe watch some of the second season and see from the beginning of the second season and sort of see how that's animated out. Um, you've really intrigued me also about later manga chapters as well. Oh, yeah. Like, the yeah. whole... After the second season ends, there's this whole arc. It's actually not really as long as I thought it was. Like, remembering reading it and then just checking Wikipedia, seeing the chapter list. But still, there's, like, 20-something chapters, like, 27 chapters that essentially has Aladdin explaining the backstory to the universe. I mean, quite literally, the universe. Mm, right. Like, there's just so many things that are explained that I don't want to get into because it'll no, be I'm spoiling, saying, yeah, but... but there, things are a lot more complicated. And all the stuff that just seems arbitrary or just shown in the actually does have an excuse and reason in this mm-hmm. world why there are these so king candidates and the match eye mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. labyrinths and all this stuff. And yeah. it's nice going into something like this, like knowing that that stuff's going to be explained later on. You don't have to worry yeah, about definitely. it being like something that's definitely. you know. And you, you think explained fairly well, you'd say? It's yeah, I mean, okay, it's yeah. pretty damn long. It's like 25, okay, okay. 27 <laughs> chapters mm-hmm. of just explaining this big epic cool. story about just all the people who led the world to mm-hmm. become the world that it now is. Yeah. So, oh, well, sorry. I was say, well, for this genre, I think it does a good job of like building this world pretty quickly, like make it seem like a massive, thriving world that, with all the complications in the, in the locations uh, much quicker. And efficiently than a lot of series like this do, <laughs> which I, you know, I just think like you look at something like, I mean, like Naruto, for instance, like that first arc of this, they go to the one country and it lasts like 30 episodes, that whole <laughs> yeah. thing. Like, I mean, the first arc of this really lasted like th- three episodes at most, and then they're already off to other countries in all different directions and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, things happen pretty damn fast, yeah. I think, in this anime. And uh, the manga, but yeah, I, I guess because they're not, they weren't like plan. I guess it, from the beginning they probably weren't planning to make like hundred episode series. You know, like they kind of do the seasons. Um, so I wonder. I guess the third season maybe would happen. I really hope there's a third yeah. season because there's some pretty cool. It sounds stuff like that a happen. third season would be good, but probably they should wait till the manga's finished and then yeah, yeah. do a good job of series composition to wrap it up neatly. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't make up your own ending. Please. No. <laughs> oh, <my God>. no. <laughs> um, and I guess they, is the Sinbad thing like all came on Netflix at once? Is that how they released that the Sinbad prequel the anime? I believe so. Okay, so that's done with. So I guess it would make sense. So obviously they're not afraid to go back into the well for that. So maybe some time. Um, so yeah, um, like the music, like the openings, endings, they're perfectly. I enjoyed them. Yeah, they're perfectly fine. Yeah, I think they're good. Um, I don't think they're like insanely memorable. No, but no, they're like fun to surf like do they'll shake while they're <laughs> yeah, playing. they're doing the thing yeah yeah uh, they, they, they were fine they knew a lot for me but they were fine I will say the first opening like shows like every major character in the first series it's a season and that's a lot of characters <laughs> right, so, like, right, it, right. it's a lot like who are all these characters like they dump a lot on you at first it's not just showing just the three principal um, so yeah they show a couple of characters who don't even really show up until like the last third of right, the first right, season exactly, yeah, like so. the prince of the Kyo Empire right right um, yeah so and I guess as far as dungeon diving, then they've done two. I'm right up to 100, like chapter 160, and they did the two dungeons, um, which actually was kind of a, the, that second dungeon they did. The one with Zagan, I think, was the name of the genie. It was real dark because like the people that had, like entered into it, like were being oh the plant grown, one, yeah, growing yeah, trees that. and being like fed to stay alive, but they're otherwise being like sucked out of their mago. It was really messed up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's not afraid to get kind of dark. The series, though, so they had to. Um, yeah, people use limbs and yeah, like background characters get cut in half left and right yeah and like even alibaba was like in a fight with a giant monkey in the coliseum and like he broke his arm and like yeah. and then like tossed him and punched him uh, yeah <laughs> so i guess and, and the anime i don't know if it got that violent usually they don't um you, you know, have like j- morgana go right through the monkey true yeah and like jadal like did stab the uh, the his bigger slave the first bad guy yeah uh, stabbed the bigger slave as punishment a bunch of times it didn't really show <laughs> it was like 
you why are you you're doing a bad job it's like this guy's <laughs> fighting off the monster who's protecting you like why would you stab him <laughs> let him just do his job <laughs> from that disadvantage it's crazy talk anyway he's evil uh, he's one note I agree with that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that was his whole thing so yeah I, so I guess do you have any more to say or anywhere it's not a big complaint, but Ali Papo, at least in the first season, like he has some good reasons to, but he does kind of cry a lot. And mm. Yeah, he's, sad. he's a little, little bit of a wimp. Yeah, it's more far as like shonen protagonists go, he could be tougher <laughs> for sure. I, I found him a little one note at most most mm. of the times. I only saw a a small sampling of you know yeah. Ali Papo. So for me, maybe a total of six because I I. Um, I saw the first episode, you know, a long time ago. So uh, for me, at least in that sample, uh, yeah, he's a little one note most of the time. I don't see him as king. I don't see him in a leadership role. Uh, we finally do get to an episode where he he starts, you know, taking, embracing that. Um, but for most of the time, the setup for me in the sampling uh, that I experienced was that you know I don't think of him as that kind of individual. Um, so I agree with you. I I just I don't know about whiny as much as I think he's a little one note. Um, I don't know. There's more depth to him. Um, other than de- treasure and you know I, I'm not really sure so or more like <clears throat> his best friend from childhood there's a whole thing that happens in the first season and <clears throat> that yeah of, of the main s- sort of set of three characters I think Morgiana is the strongest oh, one yeah, I mean sure. she's yeah. the she's one who has her. like emotions and a backstory and reasons for the things she mm-hmm. does and conflicts that like you can yeah. see play out and the other characters yeah. are a little more sort of generic and I think they give her a good amount of screen time I think yeah. that's, that's another thing they don't drop her off it's because like you know there's three characters you only have two main characters on that. Like they ever, all three of them kind of get their time to shine which I think is yeah. for better or for worse depending on how you think yeah. of the characters but and at least from what I've seen she's active as protagonist and yeah. she doesn't like sit around for waiting for the other characters to save her you know she finds it no, herself she does, she does save the saving herself. quite a lot actually yeah. Yeah. She's, you see her grab them and pull them out of harm's way like a lot of times actually yeah, in this yeah. series um, just from her sheer speed and physical strength she's uh, the badass of the group oh yeah for yeah. sure yeah, she's probably saved Ali Papa and the land's lives way okay. more times than the other way around yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah so I guess we'll see I, I'm definitely gonna keep reading it I really, I've come to really like it yeah, cool. I'm, I'm glad this got me to read it because I do I'd like a new I'm looking for a new series like this to read and there's not much Twin Star Exorcist out that I was gonna read so <laughs> Which I know the anime is not good, but I'm telling you, the manga is pretty good. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. I'm sticking to that, but um, I can see why the anime might be a little annoying, though. Having seen like synopses of those episodes, um, so yeah, I recommend it if you like the genre. Do you think someone who doesn't really like action adventure shown series would want to get into this? Or I, I, I think that would probably be a hard sell. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, this yeah. is uh, this is, in my estimation, a pretty good action shonen series yeah and so you know if you if you like that kind of thing or if you don't like the really crappy ones but kind of would like something like that then it's going to be okay but if you're if you don't like you know that genre yeah. this is not going to convert you i don't think so either um but it's also slightly not quite brainy like in air quotes like series but at the same time like there are times that they're not actually fighting fighting there are times when they're trying to solve things with politics and whatnot yeah but the thing is you that's only if you're looking at it through genre goggles mm. because like you know in the perspective of an action shown in the series hell yeah it's yeah. got all this stuff but like for the action <laughs> yeah. of like you know what you want out of a show if this is what you're looking for it's not really gonna <laughs> give that to you so yeah. I mean that's not really to criticize it because it's not mm. trying to be something it isn't but you know if you like try to sell it as this to somebody Who's like, who's not a sh- up for a shonen series? They're yeah, going to definitely yeah. be raising an eyebrow at you. Yeah, yeah there's too many episodes. Watched a few episodes. It, yeah, there's too many episodes that doesn't happen. That like, <laughs> but yeah. I do agree with you. That it is. I would also say this almost falls on more like if I say an action adventure shonen series, this seems to fall a little more on the adventure than the action side in a lot of oh, ways. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I, like, there, there are fights for sure, but like, there's a lot of like just like sort of you know exploring, scene, exploring, new seeing new world and yeah, stuff like that, and like, and it isn't all about you know the characters gearing up to beat on each other. I mean, yeah. that is not... It, powering no. up is not sort of the main goal no, of existence. No. So, it's cool. Right. I didn't mean that so much as a reason why people aren't into Shonen shows to check this out, as mm. much as I don't think this is a show that, like, younger kids or, like, people that, like, usually think Shonen is more for slightly... Like, you just want 
pure action fix where right. this might no. not be necessarily sad this has got more that. yeah this has more to it than just you know beat each other up every episode every five minutes though i have to say one of the things that made me stop watching it was the world was not quite as unique as i wanted it to be right I, it felt to me like it backed off from being sort of the full-on interesting series that it could have been and it kind of crept back into some of the shonen cliches a bit more than i would have liked so let me ask the question how would you have fixed it would you have had them do more dungeon adventures no. and stay in no, there. No, 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 no. The, the opposite. Um, I, I think splitting some of that out, making some of the characters a little bit richer, and um, I, 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 I need to watch more to see how the politics actually play out. I mean, a lot of the politics comes across. I mean, this is hard to do in anime as sort of posing the characters at each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, that's still okay. Uh, but but I think really sort of stripping back some of the. Uh, uh, sort of the, the shonen tropes might have helped a little bit. Mm-hmm. Things like the way they came up with their world with the um, uh, with well, the dungeons and I guess mm-hmm. I, 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 as I've watched more stuff like the Rook was working better for me mm-hmm. as it became more developed. So I think this is one of these shows where as the, the mangaka was you know sort of writing he mm-hmm. sort of was getting a firmer idea in his mind about how right. things worked. Mm-hmm. And so probably what I'd say is he should go back and write the series again from the beginning. You <laughs> just revise everything. But you can't do that when you're working in a weekly medium. No. No. And you know, for better or worse. Yeah, and, and that's the way it goes. You, know, you can't really criticize something that was written that way for not being, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a series written, you know, from scratch. Mm-hmm. Maybe I would have, uh, I would have aged Lan a little more. Not make him so young. Maybe age them all up. Like keep make a Lan still keep him the youngest, but maybe make him a little older. Like I just yeah, giving mm-hmm. giving Aladdin a real character arc yeah, probably right. would have been the biggest thing to sort of pull this show out of out of its genre and kill his little annoyance trope. Yeah, <laughs> well yeah, that the too, booby but, yeah. the booby face rub. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, could definitely do without that. I, I looked at a comment online, and the comment was something like his obsession with boobs is strong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I mean older. He still did that. He'd be way more. <laughs> yeah, way more it'd be way worse. It's, still yeah. kind of, it's still bad. Is it? Uh, yeah. I don't know why they do it. It's, uh, they can do comedy, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't need this that. This is not a show for comedy. No, it's not. But the, 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 this genre always has comedic moments, and I don't think this one that those were the comedic moments I looked out for. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> There are other moments though where I think the comedy does yeah. work. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying it's a comedy series, but yeah, yeah it's hit or miss when it comes to the gags. But yeah. I think there are a couple of times that you get a nice sort of character action reaction type stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. The whole thing with the uh, princess of um, Kyo when she finds out who her fa- fiance is supposed to be is pretty yeah, decently yeah. done. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> He's a real ugly looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> And an asshole, too. <laughs> so I think the uh, episode before, the one we watched, 13, has um, her, like, trying to imagine, like, I wonder what my prince will be like, and then she's kind of, like, imagining Sinbad instead. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then once she actually sees him, I'm mean, they pretty decently do, like, draw her expression as mm. sort of, like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I think if you like this genre, I, I think it's good. Okay. I recommend it, for sure. Uh, I'll keep reading Yep. So I think to to wrap up, I would recommend this to somebody who is specifically looking for a pretty good shonen series. Um, and if that's not what you're looking for, mm-hmm. yeah, probably yep. not. It's you know, watch an episode to see the world because it is a little interesting to see the Arabian Nights take. But don't like bank on that too much to carry the series right, yeah. for you if you aren't you know really into a show of this kind this also doesn't fall along with the standard high school trope right yes there's young characters in here but if they were to take this same idea into a high school trope they would have stuck them in a high school then they would have all been sort of what transport to the world of arabian nights <laughs> it's like, yeah. what are would we doing here dungeons in a modern uh, modern world with genies and all this spiritual stuff and it wouldn't have had anything to do with you know um that part of the world or Arabian Nights, you know, in terms of the motif. We're um, joking about this now, but I'm actually quite amazed there hasn't been an anime like that, what you just described. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, so um, at the very least, they took the idea and they didn't distort it completely, just a little bit. Um, so, you know, I give them some credit for that. Um, but, I mean, if you are totally in love with that formula, that exact template all the time, this is probably not your show, even if even though it's shonen. 
Uh, I would give it, I would say that, right? So, um, you know, be honest with yourself, know what you were interested in and why. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if that's your deal, then then I don't think this falls mm-hmm. falls into that. Okay. Yep. And Botox, what do you think? Final Final thoughts? I think it works well as an adventure show. I'm not quite sure if, like, just giving it across the board shonen is quite right because yeah. a lot of times when I think shonen I think more uh, fighting I think a bit more like the uh, knife and fork guy the um, Toriko that's yeah, it yeah. Mm-hmm. like Toriko or maybe Dragon Ball yeah, yeah. where it's right, yeah. more about posturing and it's <clears throat> like I <clears throat> enjoy those sh- or I enjoy Dragon Ball I've enjoyed some other shonen shows so I'm not like my said the demographic thing but still that is poop that was originally ran for those shows it's looking more and I mean even shown in the term it means yeah yeah uh, boy but um again I'm not saying this is like a really mature show but it feels a little bit older than those so like it's going for those that are looking for more than just fighting and just posturing where there's a and bit it, more it has more depth than yeah. the standard sort of action right. it's, it's scratched yeah. my one piece edge I was like that a little bit I got, I got a kind of a little vibe from it I'm not saying it's a one to one comparison mm-hmm, but. mm-hmm. Well, One Piece is an example of something that's shown in and it has way more depth to it. Yeah. For, yeah. for better so, or worse. It's yeah. been oh, a long time. So. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, not saying that all shown in is, is flat, dimensionally flat, but a lot of them don't have a lot of depth to them. Um, and a lot of them do follow that sort of high school uh, teenager trope formula template. And um, this this doesn't exactly hit it in all areas in the same way. So... Um, okay, so links. Okay, to check out Magi, it's on Crunchyroll, and you can check out at com slash said VT. So you guys are all in agreement that you definitely suggest people watch this? Yeah, if, uh, well, it with, sounds with, like with something they're like, yeah. With restrictions. I mean, this isn't one where, like, if, if this isn't one I'd recommend for the, the, the fan of serious anime. Yeah. I mean, you know, for the people who are looking for animation for animation's sake, for the interesting stuff, for the really deep shows, this isn't the show for you. Right. So you're looking for Yuri on Ice. This isn't Yuri Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a- um, and, but, um, yeah, but if you just want something a little lighter and you're willing to put up with this particular type of flaws, yeah, this show has some you, stuff to recommend. It. Would you guys... I mean, I, I did stop watching this halfway through the first season, so that lets you know where I am in terms of my own relationship with right. it. I should uh, also admit that I didn't watch through the whole season one scene. I only actually for the screening rewatched the second... or I shouldn't even say rewatch. I watched... Like, I shouldn't even say half, say <laughs> th- third. Like, I watched two thirds into the first season and then I stopped. I don't really mm. remember why I stopped, but still. Mm. And I'm, then I'm, when the second. What? <laughs> I'm sure somebody can go back through the podcast <laughs> right, and right, find right. out why. <laughs> <laughs> but then when the second season came on, for whatever reason, I decided to check it out and I watched through all of the second season, yeah. but only now came back and watched the last bit of the first season. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But even after I finished watching the second season, then I read a bunch of the manga because it engaged me enough. So it's one of those things where, like, it's not bad, but there's some degree of, like, not quite trudging. I think that's too harsh a word, but... Like well, the art uh, author is kind of. It's it's not necessarily a show that drags you in. I mean, it's perfectly competent. It's got some good stuff, but it isn't like a show you sit down and say, "Man, this is the greatest thing mm-hmm. ever." Now, I mean, you know, in, in the sampling that I had, you know, uh, it was very handpicked to these are the these are good episodes to watch. So I, you know, whatever pacing issues or whatever filler issues that are there, I didn't experience. You were definitely more engaged with this than a lot of the stuff sure. we've been watching yeah. lately. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to go watch it in full sure. myself. Sure. I I I think where I was was I think it it seemed like an interesting thing that could have potential. And the question is how much mileage does it have on that? Um, sounds like for you guys it had way way more mileage than it did for me. Um, look, the episodes that I saw were were fairly good. Um, but it, it isn't enough for me to want to, you know, sit down and watch hours of this yeah. um, to experience. But the question that I had for you guys before you were interjecting a lot <laughs> was, um, do you think this is a good mix-in in an anime club? 
And I guess this is knowing your anime club yeah, and so, how they respond so, I, to things. I th- the thing to think about with an anime club is if you're going to watch both seasons, I think that's like, what, 52-ish episodes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a pretty big commitment. So. Small for this type of show, actually, in a lot of ways. Yeah. But, yeah, but yes, there's a big So, commitment. I mean, so personally, this isn't the type of show I would tend to pitch for an anime club. Mm-hmm. But if you've got an anime club that's, you know, down for this kind of shonen, it's not bad. Um, I think that some of the political pacing, if you're watching like, like we used to do two episodes, Episodes each showing, that could t- it could take a while, and that means you might not get a huge payoff any or particular guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and figuring out and trying to remember, you know, exactly what the mm-hmm. status of all these kingdoms was could be a little difficult, and that's kind of one of the the difficulties with remaining engaged with this series uh, while yeah. you're watching okay. it. Well, that's good enough. All right, uh, links real quick, just so because people have forgotten yeah, yeah, already. Right, right. Uh, Crunchyroll, I didn't know what was the link. Okay, so Mad Shy, it's on Crunchyroll. You can check out at oglink.com slash said VT. Okay, thank you guys. Um, I guess it's time to wrap up. So for all the things we mentioned here, please visit our websites, www.talkgeneration.net or just ognetworks.tv. Um, thank you guys for the suggestion. It wasn't a bad anime. Yes, uh, it did have some of my attention most of the time, which is actually pretty good for me considering. Uh, so what are we going to do next week? Well, we are entering in the territory of show 600, I believe. Um, so so we're 600 weeks old. Uh, put that calculation in your head. Uh, and we will have another show. Who will be here? I don't know. But you will be on a Wednesday because that's when we podcast. For feedback, you can always hit us up at otaku.generation at gmail.com. If you have a difference of an opinion about Magi, please let us know. You can also hit us up with voicemail by phone or by Skype, Otaku Generation one word, or by 610-628-3154 or 206 9 Six five eight one five four or the Google voicemail, and that is four eight four three nine three fourteen zero five. And in any case, you can use technology to call us. You don't actually need a phone anymore. Uh, yeah, I, I think we might as well just kill them because no one calls anymore. <laughs> um, okay, Say that every three weeks, yeah, like, it I know. Never gets killed. Yeah, never, <laughs> never happens. All right, Botas, what do we got? Okay, although a magic lamp never appears in this anime, mm-hmm. and also there are no free wishes granted with the genies, I'm still going to do some magic lamp. Anyway, I'm going to go for the appendage of magic lamp in their pants, mm-hmm. and for the saying, a friend or partner will soon be calling on you for help with a <laughs> magic lamp in their pants. You know, a magic flute in... <laughs> <laughs> the pants <laughs> <who> were better. <laughs> so, anyhow, all right, everyone. Uh, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving, and uh, we're venturing in December. So, uh, until next time, everyone, have a good one. Bye.